production, small world production is also increasing. So if you look at the last 10 years, the CAGR for uh, the growth in pulses production in Africa has been close to 15%, which is significant when we look about uh, uh, the, the overall growth rate uh, of pulses production globally. Now, area under cultivation, if you look at, uh, there are, I've put in, uh, say, the five, ma five or six major producing countries. Uh, last 10 years, how the area under cultivation has grown. Uh, this is in million hectares, so we were talking about close to 800,000 hectares in Ethiopia, which has gone 1 up to 1.5, which is really doubled. If you look at uh, Kenya, Kenya has been fluctuating because uh, there's a very interesting thing about Kenya. Kenya, pulses is called as a women's crop. I don't know the reason for it, but pulses is uh, called a women's crop, and male farmers find it difficult cultivating a women's crop. So that's why you see fluctuation in Kenya, but Kenya has been a major uh, supplier of pulses. Uh, Malawi has been more or less stagnant. Uh, Mozambique is a new uh, say growth last uh, 10 to 15 years. Mozambique has seen a lot of area. Sudan is a new entrant. We didn't see Sudan as a uh, say major producer or area. Pulses, uh, pulses cultivation in Sudan was not so significant uh, till 2004. Last few years, Sudan has actually uh, say dedicated about 400,000 hectares for pulses, which is and, and the quality uh, people say. Uh, has been much, much uh, better than other African regions, for Pigeon Peas specifically. Uh, Uganda and Tanzania, Tanzania has seen the uh, most, uh, say, significant increase in the area under cultivation and uh, has doubled from what it used to do in 1994. So, uh, pulses, if you look at, it's more of the Eastern Africa that grows pulses because that's where it's the anglophonic country, it's where the Indian diaspora is more stronger and the Indian trade connect is more stronger. So, pulses has been predominantly in East African crop, but countries like Nigeria, countries like Ghana have started to uh, look at pulses. Uh, I, have, I have got a request uh, from a, a government delegation from, uh, say, Nigeria, who is discussing introducing pulses as a policy, uh, say, developing policies to introduce pulses as an agriculture crop. What happened with oil, uh, they have realized the importance of uh, agriculture exports, and now one of the key agricultural exports they are looking at is pulses. So not only India, but the overall global market, the way it is expanding, has actually uh, led a lot of countries like Nigeria and Ghana, which are West African countries, which have nothing to do with pulses right now, are looking at growing more pulses in that area. So uh, like Sudan, we might see next year probably uh, during the global, uh, say, or the, during the, the conclave when we speak, you might have uh, seen, or you might actually see some production levels coming in from Nigeria and Ghana as well. So that's, that's where the policy focus is going. Uh, fastest growth has been registered in Tanzania uh, and the steep rise in area and the cultivation has been uh, significantly increasing. Now still pulses are unexplored, uh, uh, underexploited sector. If you look at Ethiopia, uh, out of the total cultivated area of 15 million hectares, about uh, uh, 50 million hectares is cultivated. So 35 out of 35, 15 is cultivated and out of that 15 only 1.5 million hectares goes into uh, say pulses. So just a 10% land mass of the cultivated land is producing pulses and Ethiopia is a major player in pulses, uh, in some categories of pulses, some varieties of pulses. Same in Kenya, if you look at uh, about 1.7 out of 27 uh, say, uh, million hectares of the total land mass. Malawi, again, uh, out of the total land mass of, uh, cultivated land mass of 3.7 of just about 600 uh, say, hectares. So what, what are the point I want to bring home here is, uh, with, the force, with, the, with the focus of the governments and the collaboration with the government of India, the government of India has been quite aggressively promoting uh, import of pulses from uh, Africa uh, in last two years. And because of that, a lot of uh, say interest in growing more pulses has come up. We have seen, I have been working with various African uh, NGOs and the donor support programs. You can actually see a lot of those donor support programs are focusing on using pulses as an either as an intercrop or as an uh, as a crop for uh, increasing more exports. Pulses is becoming an important, uh, say, export crop uh, for African uh, origins. So that means that the area under cultivation, the availability of area under cultivation is high, and we can actually see more pulses being grown in uh, these uh, countries and a more area out of the cultivated area being diverted into uh, pulses. So th the scope is immense and it is still unexploited. Now pulses trade between India and Africa, the major pulses that are grown in Africa and which India consumes, of course, uh, pigeon peas uh, that comes from Africa. Uh, if you look at the pigeon peas uh, supply, about 
close to about 48 percent of our total supplies of Indian peas comes from Africa. Like 27 percent comes from Tanzania, about 15 percent comes from Mozambique, uh, 5 percent comes from Malawi, and a little bit from Kenya and now from Sudan as well. So about 48 percent of the total production, uh, total imports that we do in case of pigeon peas is from uh, Africa. Uh, yellow gram, uh, then we have uh, green mung beans, the uh, red kidney beans, cow peas, chick peas, so various type of pulses that we are uh, uh, say importing from Africa. So uh, Tanzania, if you look at uh, the African opinions, Tanzania, Mozambique, Kenya, Malawi. Malawi and Mozambique are more towards uh, the pigeon, uh, pigeon peas, but Tanzania is into uh, different uh, uh, say varieties, including uh, mung beans, including uh, the uh, chick peas and other crops. Now let's talk about country-wise outlook, where and how uh, this this has uh, this this uh, has been. Ethiopia is uh, actually a country located in the Horn of Africa, one of the most prominent countries in Africa. Uh, uses the port called Djibouti for its export. Uh, pulses is an important uh, crop. Now pulses is interesting in Ethiopia because pulses has a big domestic market also. Lentils, for example, is a big domestic market. Uh, you would be uh, surprised to know. About 130 days out of 365 days in, in, in Ethiopia, people are fasting. And those days, they don't eat meat. So the major source of uh, protein, even in Ethiopian diet, is pulses. And uh, within the category of pulses, chickpeas and uh, the uh, lentils is one of the, or they call it misa, uh, is the major supplier of uh, their protein. So a local market for these commodities is very high, or these type of varieties is very high. Uh, they have been trying to export chickpeas, but chickpeas in India is not, uh, because of the size, there is an uh, issue. Uh, but they export a lot of uh, green mung beans and uh, uh, they export major crop that they export, major variety they export is the red kidney beans. Uh, last year, uh, say the average, if you look at the uh, say kidney beans, about 120 uh, tons of uh, kidney beans is being produced and exported. Majority of the kidney beans that is produced is exported. It is distinct for the uh, Indian and the uh, South Asian market. Last year, things have not been uh, uh, say so good. The production was there about 130 to 140,000 tons of uh, red kidney beans were produced in Ethiopia, but because of the fumigation norms and the uh, uh, say the fumigation uh, say I would call it uh, the disagreements between the fumigation processes within the two countries, the exports were significantly low. So uh, that's that's there. Uh, Red lentils, as I said, and desi chickpeas have a lot of domestic consumption. So, not uh, and whatever goes is uh, the chickpeas actually goes to the Middle East and then the uh, uh, say Pakistani market. We don't in India we don't import that much of uh, say chickpeas, or the Indian markets do not consume uh, that much of uh, chickpeas from uh, Ethiopia. The average price of chickpeas was about uh, 600 to 700 uh, US dollars FOB Djibouti uh, last year. This was uh, say. This, this was in the light of uh, the, the, the uh, say the pressure on the chickpea, the prices of chickpea shot up significantly in uh, Ethiopia, but then they started to reset back, and uh, this was where the uh, year ended. Uh, the Ethiopian calendar actually starts after May, so May, June, July is the time when they have the major rains. Ethiopia has two rainy seasons. One is one which starts from uh, somewhere around December, January, uh, where they have short rains, and then the, the, uh, the long rains they call it. Uh, start from uh, May and June, and that is when the uh, harvesting happens, or that is when the sowing happens rather. So, uh, at this point of time, uh, given the market movement of uh, prices, there is an uh, uncertainty about how much uh, would be grown this time for the Indian market. But yes, average production, we are expecting the, no the rains have been normal. Uh, at least Ethiopia has not been affected by uh, the, the, the drought. So the rains have been normal, the uh, short rains have given a good indication, so we are expecting the red kidney beans and the other crops to be at the average production levels. So that's that's how uh, Ethiopia is structured. Kenya, uh, pulses are around for 11% of the daily calorie requirements, and uh, second to cereals, again a local market is there. Uh, green pigeon peas is consumed as, as, as vegetable in Kenya. So, uh, so pigeon peas are grown in Kenya, but they are not processed or they are not actually consumed or exported uh, as pigeon peas or as dal, but they just consumed as a vegetable. Uh, pigeon pea is the second uh, second to beans, which is the uh, say most stable crop in uh, in, in Kenya. Uh, the average price of pigeon pea last year was about 570 dollars per ton, uh, which was again uh, the average export was about 14 to 15 thousand tons of uh, say uh, pigeon peas. 
So Kenya, uh, if you look at the, the, the quantum of export that they do, it's not a significant exporter. This year, uh, the Kenyan crop is expected to be further low. Uh, already the government has declared a drought in Kenya. So uh, the production, the maize has severely been affected. Uh, the pulses, uh, the, the sowing, sowing has been delayed because of the rains and because of the uh, lack of rains. Uh, another issue which uh, Kenya is facing right now is the shortage of seed. The seed, seed prices have shot up significantly, making uh, the farmers move to other crops. Uh, and uh, the uh, conventional farmers who actually grow seeds, as who actually grow uh, pigeon peas as vegetables, would continue to grow that. But the destiny, the, the export market, uh, say, uh, the, the crops grown for export uh, of these may not be that uh, significant this year. But with that, I have to also say, uh, recently the government of Kenya has developed a strategy uh, which they call it uh, as the export strategy for pulses and which is destined exclusively for Indian market. So the government has spent a lot of time and energy developing a strategy how to grow more pulses that can cater to the Indian markets. So you can actually see in which uh, new varieties have been introduced. Secrets has been working with the government of Kenya and uh, recently uh, the last leg of testing is going on for a variety of pigeon peas which would give three crops a year. So we are expecting more uh, output coming in from Kenya, we are expecting uh, more exports happening out of Kenya, but that is a long term horizon, not uh, say for the uh, uh, say next year. Uh, uh, say, uh, if you see the Hmong beans, that's about uh, 25, 30,000 uh, average export in Kenya. About 40,000, 40 to 45,000 is the average production, which uh, is exported about 30 to 35,000 metric tons uh, every year. Hmong uh, beans are a small, uh, say, say small variety crop and uh, or small, small in the sense, uh, short variety crops, so uh, two to three crops come every year there. So that's about uh, Kenya. Moving to Tanzania, again a major, major player in uh, uh, say commodity, uh, uh, say specifically pulses, one of the major export of pigeon peas. Two varieties are exported from uh, Tanzania, uh, Arusha and Mutwara. Uh, Mutwara is actually uh, a variety that comes in at a later stage, the sowing would happen after May. Um, the sowing for uh, Arusha variety, Arusha Babati, these varieties are with the central, uh, central region which, is, uh, which happens somewhere around uh, say uh, January, December, January. So that's where again Kenya has this year declared a drought. So last year there were issues, uh, the pigeon pea production uh, and the export of pigeon peas is roughly around 80, 80 to uh, say 100,000 tons, uh, 1 lakh tons, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, 100,000 tons uh, of export every year. That's an average uh, export. This year, the production is expected to be low, majorly because the, uh, the, the, the rainfall, rain has not been good. There has been a drought in uh, Tanzania. There has been uh, availability of the seed has been an issue. Uh, the seed prices have suddenly shot up. The seed prices which used to uh, have, have actually doubled. So it makes uh, Tanzania, uh, the Tanzanian farmers uh, difficult to get the seeds. And these countries, the production is dominated by smallholder farmers. So seed prices have significant impact on, uh, on the production. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's where uh, the uh, Tanzanian uh, market stands. Uh, significantly, uh, the last, since the last few years, uh, Tanzania has been exporting more crops to, to uh, India. But this year we are expecting the prices. The couple of factors put together what happened last year with the prices, the drought, the availability of the seed, everything. Uh, the expectation is that the crop this year that would be available for India uh, from uh, Tanzania may be about uh, say 15 to 20 percent short. Malawi, uh, this is part of the southern, it's, it's borders with Tanzania, but it's part of the southern, uh, uh, say part of uh, the southern part of uh, Africa. It's, it's a country that uh, say produces a good quantity of pigeon peas. Average production of pigeon peas is between 18,000 to 1 lakh tons. Uh, last year the production was up uh, by 15-20% uh, than usual, there were good, uh, uh, good rains though uh, other crops had significant two years of drought was there in Malawi but this, uh, but the, the pigeon pea production was much better. Uh, higher, uh, the major issue in Malawi is the logistical challenges because uh, the port that they use is in Mozambique, the Bera port and uh, taking the goods from uh, say the production areas in Malawi to Bera, uh, the cost is very high. So that's something that makes it a little bit of... Uh, 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 difficulty. The government agencies have stepped into Malawi uh, to promote pulses. Uh, government parastatal, EDMAC. EDMAC is an agency that has the mandate from the government to procure the crops from 
this model of farmers across uh, the uh, country. So it has deep uh, village collection centers through which it collects and it is looking for partners who can actually partner with Edma to buy those crops, uh, say for export. So they do not, they, what they lack is the export market and that is where uh, one of the opportunities are there. Some quantities of green gram and black gram is also grown in uh, Malawi but not very significant about uh, say not more than 1000 tons of uh, these, uh, both, the, both the crops are available in the market. So uh, the major still lies to be uh, to be uh, pigeon peas. This year again, uh, Malawi, uh, there were heavy rains in January, uh, which has further delayed. Uh, we are expecting a better season this year. Uh, the sowing should have been started in March. Sowing has been delayed because of the soil filtration and the uh, high moisture content, uh, and because of which uh, we are expecting uh, the the, uh, the uh, sowing to happen somewhere in uh, say next next month or so. So at this point of time, uh, the position about Malawi is not very clear, but we are expecting, uh, uh, say, the average, uh, say, temperatures and the average uh, rainfalls, the crop should be uh, reasonably good enough. Mozambique, uh, again, another important producer in eastern southern Africa. Uh, Mozambique produces around 60,000, uh, say, average export has been about 60 to 70,000. And if you look at Tanzania, Kenya, uh, Tanzania, Malawi, Mozambique, all put together export about uh, 3 to 3.5 3, 3 uh, say uh, lakh tons. So Mozambique has been uh, say fluctuating, average has been 5-6 year average has been 60,000 but last few years has been more, uh, about 100,000 up to 100,000 they have exported. Uh, the government of India has signed an agreement with Mozambique to buy about 200,000 tons, which is about 2 lakh tons uh, but uh, the, the agreement is quite, uh, how do I put it, uh, it's quite Confusing, uh, say for for the uh, for, for for the local 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 industry there. What exactly this agreement would mean? Would the government would come in and buy? How this agreement would be implemented? That's something that's still not very clear. Uh, and then the recent uh, say uh, say say talk about putting up the uh, say import duty. How that would actually figure out this agreement? The whole lot of confusion about uh, that. Uh, other the, the major uh, say pulses that they produce is cow peas, pigeon peas, and green uh, peas. So. Uh, three gram and cow peas is about 12 and 3,000 tons. The major is pigeon uh, peas. Sudan has been the new origin into the market. Uh, major variety is pigeon peas. Uh, the pigeon pea variety that is coming from Sudan is quite closer to the uh, to, to the, to the Myanmar uh, pigeon pea, and uh, the quality is more appreciated in India. Uh, the average export has been around 45,000, 40 to 45,000 tons in the last uh, few years. So it has been a new new market, but is quite finding new uh, is finding good grounds in. Uh, Uganda is uh, its neighbor with Kenya and Tanzania, major, uh, again a player in pulses, uh, major pulses that are produced of pigeon bees and uh, mung beans. The average is about, uh, not, not too high, about 10,000 metric tons of green gram and pigeon bees is exported. So uh, Uganda has uh, started to look at pigeon bees as a policy, uh, say, from the policy perspective of the government. They are looking at the uh, promoting pigeon bees, but all these initiatives would take some time to actually step in and uh, uh, give results. So immediate future, I don't see a lot of production increase coming from in Uganda, but over a period of three to four years, you can see Uganda becoming a more important player. Uh, new developments, the government of uh, India is moving with African countries to expand, uh, uh, say, production and promotion of imports from African countries has been uh, talked about and it has actually excited a lot of African countries to get into, uh, say, pulses processing, or pulses, pulses production, rather. Uh, now, this was, uh, about, this started with the discussions about two years back, which actually finalized in uh, June last year, June, July last year, when the Prime Minister visited Mozambique and the agreement was signed. Uh, similar agreements are in pipeline with Kenya, similar agreements are in pipeline with uh, Tanzania and other countries as well. Uh, the Indian High Commission in Nigeria has approached the Ministry of Agriculture for a similar type of arrangement. So a lot of push from the government side has been seen to promote agriculture. The, the, uh, the package that the government of India is offering is you, you produce the commodity and we will buy it out at the uh, minimum support price prevailing in India. Uh, the, that gives a comfort to the producer that there is a fixed, uh, there, there is more or less an, uh, a short price that I would get and that gives the government a comfort about the import quantities. How we would see about in next uh, say one or two years when uh, the actual imports would start to happen and would start to see the product coming into the country. So that's that's where uh, pulses export policies have been developed in Kenya and Tanzania. In Turkey, as I said, I was part of the team that developed that pulses export policy. Uh, this is under an initiative called CETA, which is supported by uh, the uh, Development Financial Aid of UK. 
uh, ITG is also an uh, uh, important partner with that. Uh, the, pro the project CETA uh, stands for supporting India's trade and investment with Africa, where six or seven uh, value chains have been identified, pulses being one of them, where the uh, governments in these countries are being supported to develop more pulses to feed into the Indian market. Uh, the studies are showing, and uh, there are enough experts uh, on that matter uh, here in the room, uh, but what I have come across is the studies have been showing that the income elasticity uh, of pulses in India is about 1.5, which means if the per capita income is growing by about 5-6%,